So, so far we have looked at basic introduction to GPU. We looked at OpenACC Hello World program and uh, OpenACC overall execution semantics. Yesterday we looked at the specific compute construct for parallelization. Today we are going to look at the magical construct kernels, which is actually one of the very important constructs with respect to parallelization for domain experts. We said that the domain experts might not be HPC experts and therefore it's possible that they may not be able to parallelize the code in the same effective manner as an HPC expert. But we they have the full, I mean, they know about the physics or the biology or the underlying aerodynamics uh, very well. So the job of OpenACC is to allow such people to uh, parallelize their codes effectively. And therefore the onus uh, gets changed, the onus of parallelization gets changed from the domain expert to the compiler. So the compiler is going to do certain magic and one of the important aspects there is this kernels construct where we just specify that this part of the code I want to parallelize. Right? How it needs to be done and what exactly needs to be done, let the compiler figure out. Right. So that is the original motive behind this kernels construct. Okay. And, uh, and many times it works out that way. However, there are some caveats and whenever there is a magic, sometimes we don't understand what exactly is happening and that can cause issues. And that is something which I would like to highlight as we learn about this kernels construct, right? So there will be some things which will be surprising. So let's be ready for that, but let's try to understand it together and uh, hopefully things will be all right, okay? So like uh, uh, all previous classes, feel free to ask questions at any point in time. Okay, so the kernel's construct is uh, over, overall meant to improve the programmer productivity. Uh, and in general, that is the philosophy of OpenACC, but more so for the kernel's construct. And as I was mentioning that uh, a domain expert or a novice HPC programmer should be able to specify the code to parallelize and let the compiler do the magic. Okay, so uh, not only, so, okay, I'll uh, step back. In case of OpenMP and OpenACC, what we specify is what to parallelize. In case of OpenMP and OpenACC, with these pragmas that we specify, we specify what part of the code should be parallelized. We usually don't specify how it should be parallelized. In contrast, when you are dealing with CUDA or OpenCL kind of languages or pthreads, we also specify how it should be parallelized. The kernels construct goes a step further where we, I don't specify what should be parallelized either. Let the compiler figure out what should be parallelized and how it should be parallelized and so on. So um, let's, let's uh, delve directly into it. Okay, so I'm going to show one example. This is a small snippet of code, which is part of some main or some function. And we expect that Okay, uh, before we getting into the kernels part, let's understand what happens when you do not have this ACC kernels. What happens and what should be the sequential output on the CPU, right? So we expect that one should get printed, then A of I equal to I should happen from zero to nine. And then A of two A of nine equal to nine should get printed in the sequential part. Then A of I uh, gets multiplied by two, and then uh, the final printf, which prints 3a of 9 equal to 18, should get printed, right? So that is the sequential execution of this uh, particular code. When we add hash pragma ACC kernels, we'll let the compiler figure out what should be parallelized and where it should be parallelized, whether it should be running on CPU or GPU and so on, right? And we expect the output to be similar. So we expect that printf1 should get printed on the CPU and that should occur first. A of i equal to i, this for loop is a for loop and therefore it should get parallelized even though the loop count is small in this case but in general it can be parallelized. So A of i equal to i, uh, this first for loop should get parallelized onto the GPU. Once that is done, then the second printf should get printed uh, now, whether it happens on the CPU or GPU, well, that is something to uh, figure out. But essentially, the value of 9 that gets printed should be 9. 
after the gpu execution of the for loop is over right so that is the expectation out of this after the printf gets executed printf2 gets executed uh, again there is a for loop which should also trigger another kernel execution on the gpu because it is also nicely parallel but it should not be run in uh, parallel with the first for loop right it should run after the first for loop is over because there is a dependence right i am uh, uh, writing something to a of i in the first loop and reading from a of i as well as writing to a of i in the second loop so it should happen as a second kernel which naturally happens in the context of gpus anyway that if i have two kernels then those are going to execute one after the another because there is a sing single command queue which we are using in our setup finally when a of i equal to uh, star equal to to this second for loop gets executed on the gpu then i print a of 9 equal to 18 and that will get printed either by the cpu or the gpu depending upon what the compiler does right so this is something which we would like to check okay so now i compile this program and uh, i execute it uh, on the gpu on uh, using pgcc what do you think is going to be the output any guesses will it be the same as cpu or will it be any different okay so let's uh, let me show you what happens right so the output turns out to be exactly the same as the sequential output where there is one followed by two a of nine equal to nine and three a of nine equal to eight right so this is the output big deal i mean what did you do extra to get this output you might ask but let's understand what is happening okay so the compiler in this case is going to split the kernels region that is the complete block of opening closing brace into a sequence of steps some of them are sequential some of them are parallel and that is what we also expect it's not that every thread is going to execute all of this print then for loop then print and then for loop and then print all of that is not going to happen that used to happen in parallel in case of kernels it's just going to analyze and identify the sequential and parallel codes and as we discussed the two for loops should be parallelized the other three printfs uh, will get sequentially executed. Now, whether it happens on CPU or GPU, that we'll have to worry about. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, the, typically, each loop nest is a different kernel. There are exceptions to this, and we'll come to that. Uh, typically, if you have a nicely data parallel code, then with a good chance, the compiler will automatically create a kernel for it and execute it on the GPU. And the kernels get executed in order which is the order which we maintain in the original, I mean, the program order, essentially. Uh, that is because the kernels are going to get pushed into the same command key. Okay, so therefore they are going to get executed one after the other. Okay, so far so good. And this does convey some advantage of using the kernels construct. Um, any questions so far? All right. So, uh, but I hope that you are able to appreciate that the compiler is able to automatically figure out the parts and running it on the appropriate parts on the GPU, right? So that is a very, very useful thing, okay? So just to uh, recap, sorry, there was a question. Uh, so yeah, I was asking can this. Can we assume? Sorry, yeah, go can, on, go we, on. Yeah, can we assume that uh, printf statements are uh, getting printed in CPU? <laughs> no, we cannot assume that. <laughs> I'll, I'll come to that. Yes, that's an important point here that will all printers be executed on the CPU or on the GPU? No. And that is what we would like to understand that kind of can bring in the surprises. Right. So uh, a question carrying on from this, let's say hmm. if I have a printf within a loop, hmm. so will that printf again go from the GPU or the CPU? Yeah, it will again come from the GPU. Okay, Assuming so that the for loop is getting parallelized. Okay, but uh, these standalone prints that we are not sure right now. Uh, yes, in fact, we will, we may not be even sure of the printers which are coming from the for loops. As I was mentioning, there are exceptions where uh, for loop may not get parallelized at all. But yes, in general, uh, 
the printers inside the for loops when the for loop gets uh, parallelized will come from the gpu that is all okay but uh, right now let's say this a of ii is there right the first one correct uh, so if we push in a printf say in along with that let's say we do a printf a of ii correct so that printf will definitely be coming from the gpu right yes that is correct okay yeah. okay sounds good so we'll uh, get into uh, yeah so i was summarizing this that the first printf gets executed sequentially then there is parallel part then there is another sequential then parallel part and sequential right so as we said that the kernel is going to split the overall uh, kernel's region into a sequence of steps uh, uh, some of them are going to be sequential some of them are going to be parallel okay so let's uh, make one small change to this right what is the change i made i just added inside the for loop essentially what dhruva jyoti said that i have added that printf okay the printf says first loop something and then the second printf says second loop something right um, so definitely these outputs are going to change but what is the output that you expect will it be the same as sequential or will it be any different Sandeep says different. Why is that? Okay. So in general, there is a possibility that the output of this code might turn out to be different than the one that we get from the CPU. Uh, sorry, from the sequential execution, fully sequential execution, and that is because of the ordering across these printfs when multiple threads are executing. Let's say the first, uh, I mean the first loop printf. So the ordering amongst threads cannot be guaranteed. I mean in this case it will so happen that you will not, you will always see zero to nine being printed. But if you have a large number, less than hundred or something more than that, then the output can be arbitrary. so as far as that part is concerned yes there might be some different output but as far as the uh, order of first printf that is one versus first loop 0 to 9 are concerned one will always get printed before this first loop okay any of the first loop uh, at the same time uh, i'll also mention that Two a of nine equal to nine will always get printed after all the first loop printed prints are done, and the second loop will start only after print of two is done, and three a of nine will get printed only after all of the previous prints are done. Right. So this is that way exactly similar execution order as the CPU sequential, and so far things seem to be same. Okay. If there are any surprises, even now, please feel free to highlight. All right. So I'm going to now make a small change, right? So please remember this program, where we had one, then there was printf first loop, then there was a of nine equal to something, then there was printf second loop, and then three a of nine equal to something, right? So let's remember that, and now. i'm just going to make some small change to this code okay what i have done is that the printfs inside the for loops remain the same printf1 remains the same instead of printf2 and printing a of 9 i'm just saying printf2 and instead of printing 3a of 9 i'm just printing 3 okay Uh, okay there are some questions uh, first loop printf orders are in order how uh, this happens because of uh, the way uh, gpu execution happens in a warp based way where the warp is constituted by 0 to 31 threads and therefore their outputs get concatenated thread wise and therefore for 0 to 10 you will not see any difference but for larger values of n yes this can be ordered arbitrary 
Rajendra Singh, why is the order not changing? Uh, yeah, if you are talking about why is the order not changing across this one, then first loop, then two, and then second loop, and then three is because, um, okay, I'll, I'll probably explain this a little more later, but because this uh, first loop is getting printed by the GPU, 2A of 9 is also getting printed by the GPU. Second loop is printed by the GPU and A of 9 equal to 18 is also printed by the GPU and therefore this execution order doesn't change um, as such. Right? So it still remains the same. Yimanshu um, says, shouldn't the order get mixed? Within a for loop, yes. Beyond that, no. Uh, just as due to warp size beginning of size 32. Correct. Thanks, Josh. Yeah. They will execute I'm it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Now this printf1 and then printf2 and then printf3, these are printed by the GPU. No. Okay. Printf2 and printf3 are printed by the GPU. Printf1 uh, that is, CPU. Yeah, is printed by the CPU. Yeah, I'm jumping ahead. But um, yeah, since this discussion came up, I'm just specifying that. Why then print Let's understand. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm saying this. The second and third print depths are going from the GPU. Yes, they are coming from the GPU. Okay. And we'll see. We'll also understand that how to analyze this. And we can't be predicting it all the time, right? So uh, there is a way to identify which part is running on, which part is going to run on the GPU and which part is going to run on the CPU, right? So the compiler will help us. Uh, Pranav says, can we specify or force the order of execution? Uh, in the sense, uh, which orders do you want to force? Can you just give one example? Like the loop order? Uh, if Okay, so if at all you want to force the order, it might be best to run it sequentially. Right, then it may not be a good idea to put it as part of the kernels. You can put that one into kernels and then remove that for loop which contains the first loop outside the kernels, pragma, so that it will run sequentially. Right? And if you at all you want to run it sequentially on the GPU, that is also possible. You just add hash pragma ACC serial and it will run sequentially on the CPU. Right? Uh, but if we are leaving it for parallelization to the compiler, then the compiler can parallelize it and then the order will not be guaranteed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. E even uh, WAP has uh, 32 threads, but uh, uh, the order across these 32 threads cannot be enforced, right? Yeah, in general, we should not believe that. It so happens that uh, uh, the order of printers uh, turns right. out to be the same just because of the, the way it gets implemented. Uh, nothing okay. like we should be relying on that. I mean, no documentation says that the uh, printers from 0 to 31 will get concatenated. It's just that that is what we observe. Okay. For multiple times also, we typically yeah, get this. Yeah, okay. we get exactly the same. Oh, yeah, that is correct. All right. So uh, let's come to the uh, classwork. So I want you to think about what will be the output of this particular program. And as I uh, have shown using these uh, red lines, uh, there is sequential and parallel and that continues to remain as it is. It's just that the location of uh, these printfs might change, right? And that you have to think about and analyze and uh, probably logically argue. So any suggestions on what will be the output? You know, in, in the previous case, uh, the printf statements have these operands. Hmm. Yes, that uh, is the only change. Yes, you are right. 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 So in the in the new case, since we do not have these operands, uh, uh, possibly it, it can be printed anywhere ideally. I mean, yes. the compilers, uh, I mean, people who design these ACC kernels could have done either way. Both possibility exist unless there is a data de dependency. Right. Between CPU and GPU, both uh, could be fine. Correct. Okay. 
Sure. Good. Thanks for that, Rama. I'll uh, wait for a few more seconds for others to think about what could be possible uh, behaviors of this program. Right? So this analysis is very important. I request everybody to try that out. Sir, could you just go back to the previous slide? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, so you said this one, this uh, two colon A of nine is something and then three colon A of nine is something. These two you said uh, are coming from the GPU. Is this because the compiler would uh, try to prevent a data copy between the CPU and the GPU? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah, we'll come to uh, this code uh, for everybody's benefit. Uh, when we understand what exactly is happening and uh, yeah, then I think it will not remain as a surprise, but yeah, sure. Okay, so I hope all of you have thought about this a little bit. Uh, so the output turns out to be this, that one, two, three gets printed first. And this is what you will most probably observe, not necessarily that this will be the case, but uh, yeah, I have run it multiple number of times and every time I get the same output. Uh, but yeah, it is not guaranteed that it will always be exactly this, but with a good chance, you will get the same output. So one, two, three gets printed, then the first loops and then the second loop. Okay. Um, now by looking at the output, uh, can I, I would like everybody to think about why you can get such an output. Right. So please think about it, also about the discussion that we had just now, and uh, hopefully things will be clear. And if it is not, then I'll explain. Interesting to see this output. Uh, this okay. gives us some more thought. <laughs> uh, so it all depends on computation possibly, right? If yeah, there is yeah. a computation, then uh, GPU is good for the computation. Hmm. Since the printf statements do not have computation, it is uh, possibly can run in CPU. Right. And this is where the issue with kernels, I mean, whatever magic you are allowing the compiler to do, it can uh, create confusion with respect to what you were expecting as the output, right? So, I mean, we don't expect this two to come before any of the first loops, plus this three to come anywhere before the second loop. And that's what we usually also um, I mean, expect out of the serial code. And therefore, uh, if we try to match up this code, then suddenly we will see that there is an issue and the outputs are not matching, the program is incorrect or something. But once we understand the logic, uh, it should be fine as, as we have been discussing, right? So as Rama and Durvajyoti are suggesting, what is happening is that the two and three are getting printed by the host, by the CPU. Uh, even in the previous case, one was getting printed by the CPU, but two and three were not getting printed by the CPU. Those were getting printed by the GPU. And therefore, since that printf is coming from the GPU, um, it actually gets converted as a small sequential kernel. That is a kernel which is running with a single thread on the GPU. And therefore, it is going to come only after all the first loops are printed. So two, could not be printed before any of the first loops. And similarly, uh, second loop could not be printed before any uh, before two is printed. And similarly, three will not get printed before any of the second loop because three will also get three was also getting printed in the previous case. Uh, three was also getting printed three of nine was also getting printed on the GPU as a single threaded sequential kernel. What is happening now? is that because that A of nine dependency is not there, what the compiler feels is that, oh, uh, I am running this for loop on the GPU, but that printf2 doesn't have any dependence on that. So let me give that work to the CPU. CPU, what is CPU doing? Well, it printed one, then it invoked the kernel for corresponding to the first loop, and then it moved ahead. It moved ahead, and now it finds printf2. So it will just print it, the CPU will print it. Meanwhile, that first loop has started execution or maybe it is not yet executing, whatever, something is happening on the GPU. 
what will the cpu do cpu is going to go to the next instruction what is the next instruction it says that there is a for loop launch a kernel corresponding to that so it uh, launches the kernel pushes it into the command queue of the gpu and goes ahead what does it mean by going ahead it goes to printf3 and the compiler has said that this 3 also doesn't have any dependence on what the computation is happening on the gpu so let this 3 be printed by the cpu which is probably less loaded and therefore one two three all of that goes to the cpu and first loop second loop go to the gpu now in which order are these going to get printed well one is always going to get printed before any of the other prints that is guaranteed two and three might get jumbled up with first loop and second right so that is the overall analysis of this code uh, any questions on this so far so this is somewhat sort of implementing async is it <laughs> yes by default there is no uh, uh, barrier uh, when you create this loop uh, when you convert this loop into the kernel the cpu just goes ahead yeah so as dhruva jyoti was saying this is like our async that we had in the context of parallel uh, yes that is what is happening here yeah uh, but, but just to curious if if the default behavior is uh, sync mm -hmm. uh, possibly that will be useful for many non hpc experts <laughs> <laughs> i agree with that yes i agree with that uh, but maybe that is probably reducing the amount of uh, uh, heterogeneous computation that one can do and maybe that's the reason this decision has been made because finally okay. they are giving this to the compiler but yeah, I agree with that. Your point is valid. You are right. Okay, then then just to continue on that, it's it's uh, interesting. Possibly, uh, uh, when we are uh, adding this line hash pragma acc kernels, mm -hmm. they itself I'm thinking something some kind of uh, all async kernels or all sync kernels, uh, kind of. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, is there any clause which uh, we can yeah. specify there? Uh... I am not sure. Uh, yeah, need not be, but, but that would be a really yeah, useful, be useful. Yeah. useful class. Yeah, yeah I so agree. this thing could be like before this printf2, hmm. uh, can we put a hash pragma weight? Mm. I don't know. Uh, I mean, you understand what I'm trying to get at, right? Yes, yes, yes. So can you have a barrier there? Oh, I see. A barrier is possible. So, hash pragma uh, uh, weight or barrier. I yeah, think. yeah, barrier. Yeah, yeah. I think that is possible. That is possible. Okay. So, if we have that, then this two will definitely come after the printing of the first loop. Yes, that is correct. The CPU is going to wait till the kernel is over. You are right. Himanshu is saying, why were you possibly getting one, two, three before the loops every time you ran it? Any lags happen when the GPU does the calculation? Actually, the launching of the kernel has some small overhead. That could be the reason why this is happening. And this printf2 was probably pretty fast, uh, as well as printf3. And that's the reason why I didn't see. But theoretically, one can see the two and first loops getting intermixed, as well as uh, second loop uh, intermixed with two and three. That is possible. Yeah, there is a little bit of lag. CPU is usually fast. To set up this, communicate with the GPU driver and then to be running on the GPU, etc. will take some time. And meanwhile, uh, these small printers can get executed by the GPU, by the CPU. Just say maybe data transfer may also take time. Yeah, that is also there. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. You are right. Yes, thanks for that. Uh, there will be a data transfer also involved because that A of I equal to I requires that array A to be available on the GPU. While we don't need to copy it from the CPU, uh, we can just allocate it on the GPU in this case. But in some other cases, for example, the second loop, it might be required that the data is copied. Thankfully, in this case, the data is likely to be already available on the GPU. But uh, if there would have been some assignment to A initially, and then that is getting read in the first loop itself, 
then we would need to copy the array. We need the compiler will need to generate code such that the array gets automatically copied. So that will also involve some cost. Right. We'll uh, worry about the data transfer soon um, because that turns out to be one of the important factors towards performance uh, when we come to the data clauses. We would like to optimize it as much as possible. Okay, sounds good. So we'll uh, move ahead from here. Um, and uh, just to make sure that this is what is happening, uh, at least uh, behavior wise, I'm going to just add one small thing there, a uh, combination of our former two programs. I'm just keeping two A of nine there, but three I'm keeping without A of nine. Okay, now can you think about what will be the output? I hope with that discussion, you should be able to get it. But if there is any question, let's discuss. Please think about what will be the output, who will print what, and so on. Okay, Himanshu says one, three, and then the loops. Okay. And when will you print two? After first loops, okay. Pranshu says two would be between the first and the second loop, okay. Abhishek says two will print after first loop by GPU, okay. Pradipto says one, three, first loop, two, second loop, okay. So all of you seem to be agreeing with this pattern, and that conveys that whatever our discussion was, that uh, we all are in sync. Uh, Rama says one and three are by CPU, rest of them by the GPU. That is correct. Okay, so actually we get exactly the same output as you guys have rightly pointed out. And that means that we are all on the same page. Good. So uh, I hope this is clear for those who, we, uh, who could not figure it out. Uh, one gets printed by the CPU. Then the CPU moves ahead, launches the kernel corresponding to this for loop, and therefore that first loop is going to get printed on the GPU. Compiler figures out that A of 9 is getting read here, and one possibility would have been to get the A of 9 data on the CPU and print this on the CPU. But uh, the compiler is deciding that since there is data dependence and the data is already available on the GPU itself, let this A of 9 printing, that is 2 A of 9, uh, happen on the GPU itself by launching another kernel with a single thread. And that is anyway going to get uh, executed after the first kernel is executed. And therefore, 2 A of 9 is going to get printed after all of the first loops are printed. Similarly, the third loop, uh, sorry, the third kernel, which is corresponding to the second loop, uh, that also is going to get enqueued into the same command queue and therefore first loops followed by twos and followed by second loop is going to get printed. Printf3 doesn't have any dependence on any of these and therefore uh, compiler has probably given it to the CPU. So three is going to get printed after one, but it can, although you will see the output as one, three followed by these, three can potentially be in parallel with any of these printings from the GPU. Okay. Any questions, any concerns so far? All right. So we'll move ahead from here. Uh, yeah. So the overall behavior of the kernel, we have to understand by looking at what the compiler is doing. So the compiler is telling us all of this, just that we have to take a look at it. And for taking a look at what the compiler is doing, we need additional command line arguments so that the compiler can tell us. So hyphen m info equal to Excel is going to give us additional information about what lines the compiler is doing sequentially, what lines it is doing in parallel, and whether it is parallelizing it on CPU or GPU, or even running sequentially on CPU or GPU. 
okay so let's understand it so there is going to be some sort of an output which gets generated for our code and we'll try to make a sense out of this uh, uh, soon right so let's look at our program so let's say that i have declared an array a of 10 and then i have this acc kernels followed by this printf1 followed by the for loop then uh, which has the first loop then two which has a dependence on a of nine uh, then there is a comment and then there is uh, a loop which is uh, that comment is specifying when you don't have the dependence and then the second loop followed by printf3 right so this was our code um, uh, with respect to this and now if i look at the highlighted lines 7 9 13 16 those are the ones that are going to get uh, essentially used now uh, there is something interesting happening there so I'm repeating whatever is there in the orange box below uh, with respect to the lines, right? So you should be able to make sense out of this uh, output that the compiler is giving. Let's understand it line by line. Um, we need to copy A of 10 to the GPU possibly, not in this case, possibly. Um, so we might require a copy of that to be available on the GPU. So that implicit copying might happen if it is not already present, right? So for example, we said that A of i equal to i happens in the first loop, which is running on the GPU. And then A of i star equal to 2 is also happening on the GPU in the second kernel. If you have already copied the data to the, if, if you have already written to the uh, A of i in the first loop, in the first kernel, then that A is already available on the GPU. It doesn't get deactivated or deallocated when the kernel ends. And therefore, that if not already present clause is important. That is what the compiler is telling us. So uh, it doesn't need to really copy anything at this stage because you are not reading any value which is available on the CPU. You are just assigning the value to the array. So the array needs to be created rather than copied from CPU and as we discuss data clauses, we'll uh, find out constructs using which we'll be able to not only copy but also create only, right? So in this case, we don't need to copy. So uh, that is the meaning of that implicit copy. Uh, then on line nine, number nine, it finds out that the loop is parallelizable. Uh, not always it will find that the loop is parallelizable. Maybe there is some sort of a loop dependence across iterations. Uh, that will forbid the compiler from parallelizing this loop. But in this case, it's nicely parallel. So it just goes ahead and prints it, uh, goes ahead and parallelizes it on the GPU. Since it finds it's parallelizable, it gives that task to the GPU and it generates a Tesla code corresponding to it. Tesla is the family of processors for which it is generating. So you will see this Tesla uh, in the output all the time. In fact, as I was mentioning, you might have to give that as a command line parameter also in some cases. Uh, the way it parallelizes it, that uh, that is the actual pragma uh, which gets generated when we are uh, using the kernels method, kernels uh, uh, directive. It says hash pragma acc loop because it's a loop which it needs to parallelize. And then it uses a gang and a vector of size 32. That is the default warp size which we have. Um, and that means that it is going to run it with 32 threads, right? So by, by default, the gang size, which we uh, could specify with num underscore gangs, the gang size is one and vector of 32 means that 32 threads are going to get invoked, but we just require 10. So that is going to be taken care of by uh, the generated code where 22 threads are going to sit idle and only the first 10 threads are going to just work on this particular code right um, is is it that it is going to be kind of wastage yes that is true but it's not too much uh, with respect to what actually is the power of the gpu so this is a very simple code smaller code typically you will have very large numbers um, okay i think there is some question uh, Pradipto is asking, can it be three, one, then the others? And Josh is saying, no, since CPU is taking care of one and three, and instruction order need to be followed by CPU. So there will be one followed by three. That is correct. Thanks. Um, then there is a 
question abhishek is asking if we are copying array a on gpu why are we defining it as a global variable um just says that that might be because we might need to initialize data from the cpu yeah so in general we might read the data like we have the uh, five step execution diagram right? so we are usually reading the data from the disk or generating it randomly in cpu memory and then copying that data to the gpu so that processing can be done and therefore we are declaring it this way uh, if you uh, even if you declare that int a of 10 inside uh, it's not guaranteed that okay it can still happen that it will directly get allocated on the gpu yeah that is possible but in general yeah so in this case you are right that uh, if i specify int a of 10 inside the pragma icc kernels maybe it can get allocated directly on the gpu and you don't need to allocate it on the cpu need. that is right so uh, this one in line 5 you are doing int a of 10 right so right. this int a of 10 is uh, first firstly going to be on the ram right on the system memory correct and then it is going to be copied in so there should be a copy in also right generating implicit copy in yeah so in this case it actually doesn't get copied uh, because we are not reading it. I mean, the statement is not something equal to A of I on line 10. Uh, okay. Since it is only writing to A of I, we don't really need to actually copy anything. We just need to create it. So ideal way to uh, give the pragma will be uh, hash pragma ACC create A and then colon or zero colon. Okay. Like so if our second loop was actually our first loop, then it would have generated a copy in, is it? then it would have generated the copy in you are right okay so uh Dhruva Jyoti is a little ahead of the class but i'll just mention since this has come up copying in and copying out are with respect to the gpu with respect to the accelerator so copying in is you are copying in something into the gpu and copying out is you are copying out of the gpu typically on the cpu so in this case why is it generating copy out because you are uh, uh, running the code on the gpu um why would you really need a copy out here mm. anyway that uh, is not really uh mattering here but why did it say copy out and not copy in that is what i'm thinking um Yeah, I'm not able to uh, figure out why it will be, uh, why it is mentioned as copy out here. Definitely that doesn't have any effect because uh, the copy out is used when you already have written something on the GPU and you want to copy it or read it from the CPU. At that time, the copy out is going to get generated. In this case, I don't know. Right? And definitely it is not required. But Copying out also internally involves uh, creating something on the CPU, right? So for example, if I'm declaring something on the GPU and you want to create a copy of it, when you give a copy out, automatically there is creation also involved apart from the copy. I don't know if that is uh, anyway getting, uh, I mean, made use of here uh, for any reason, but that could be the only possibility. But otherwise, copy out is not required. Uh, I yeah, I yeah, have a right. small observation. Uh, at line seven, they are saying generating implicit copy out if not already present. I mean, it might be the case that it's already present and they might not need copy out. Yeah, that is true. So since A is already there on the CPU, it is and it is not uh, modified on the GPU. Therefore, it is not. Uh, uh, copying that is true so this effect is definitely not required uh, but one thing i will mention is that there is some uh, create statement required that create i don't know if it is already part of this copy out that create statement on the gpu is definitely required either create or copy in if it, this would have been copy in that would have made more sense but yeah i'm not able to exactly figure out why it's suggesting copy out okay so um, yeah so as far as uh, ninth line is concerned 
it is uh, generating code for this for loop and with 32 threads out of which 10 threads are going to be active okay after this when we are dealing with line number 13 that is where the interesting part comes in and that is where we had surprise we said the the compiler says that accelerator serial kernel generated and that confirms what our understanding was that for this single printf there is a kernel generated and that kernel is executed sequentially that means by a single thread on the accelerator and uh, that is the uh, reason that 2a a of 9 is go always going to get printed after all the first loops are printed um, and that is happening because of the data dependence which is being written a of 9 is being written and a of 9 is being read so it is written inside the for loop and read inside this print any concerns on this particular uh, part? This is the most important part of uh, the discussion. One is uh, we have to understand the compiler output. The second one is why that 2a of 9 was uh, 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 causing the trouble. Okay. And uh, if we understand that, then we will understand the printf3 also. Anyway, it is generating the Tesla code for that uh, single printf. Then it also finds the second loop parallelizable. It generates Tesla code, again runs it with 32 threads. And this particular printf3, which is running on the CPU, is, sorry, uh, printf3, it doesn't give any output, right? So the output doesn't say anything about printf3. And that shows that it is actually not generating any code on the GPU corresponding to this printf3. And therefore, it is running on the CPU. This is exactly similar to what happened with printf1. It didn't say anything about printf1, line number 8, and same as line number 20. And therefore, this is all running on the CPU. Okay. Any questions, concerns so far? Okay. So I'll move ahead. I'm going to change this a little bit. So what I'm going to change is that int a of 100 equal to 0. So I'm now initializing it, right? So uh, as I initialize, um, yeah, there should have been now a copy in. Uh, is there any problem with this? No, there is no problem. Okay, so, right. So there is no copying in required. Sorry about that. There is no copy in required because the line number 10 is still a of i equal to i. We are not still making a of i uh, read in the line number 10. We are not reading a of i and therefore we don't really require copy in. Um, yeah, but as Dhruva Jyoti was suggesting, if this second for loop would have been the first one, then a copy in should have been generated. Okay, good. One small change that we made was this second loop we ran from 10 to uh, 100 now. And uh, that has changed the output a little bit, where instead of vector of 32, it has become vector of 128. Whatever is the multiple of typically 32, uh, larger than the loop bound is uh, typically the vector size that gets used here. And uh, uh, so those many uh, threads are going to be present inside the thread. Okay, any questions so far? All right, so we'll move ahead from here. Uh, like for uh, parallel, we have some nodes which are required for the kernels also. Uh, the kernels class, the complete kernels, right? Not the individual ones, the complete kernels ends with a barrier by default, which means that there is, uh, if there is a next statement after the kernels clause, after the kernels block, that statement is not going to be executed by the CPU until the whole of the kernel block is over. But you can specify async, in which case additional asynchronous behavior similar to parallel is going to happen. And all our restrictions that were there for parallel, like you should have single if clause and then uh, you should not have any dependence across these different clauses, etc. All of that is going to be applicable for kernels clauses also. Okay. Um, okay. So 
let's analyze this output although i have mentioned it as a homework let's analyze it here uh, what will be the output of this code i have added this kernel's async here now and uh, i have also added apart from three i have added four so please analyze and five also so please analyze this output um, i request everybody to try it out in your copies or online and if there are any questions let's discuss In fact, those of you who already have the uh, compiler running, you can actually copy this code and uh, try running it. Uh, so I have the link to all codes in the Excel sheet, in the Google sheet. So you can just copy that code and try running it on your laptop and actually observe what the compiler is doing. Uh, but also try to analyze this code manually. Okay, so uh, I'll uh, explain this a little bit. First thing is that because of this kernel's async, uh, printf5 will not wait till all the previous, I mean, till this kernel's block is over, right? So there is no barrier between the end of the kernel and printf. Okay. Uh, that means that if uh, printf4 gets printed, and the GPU is still executing this particular for loop, uh, printf5 might still get printed. So A of percent %D, whatever we are printing in this third for loop, that might uh, get printed after 5 is printed. Without a sync, 5 will always come in the end. After all of this 1, 2, 3, 4, as well as all the in-between printfs get printed, uh, then only the 5 is going to get printed uh, if there is no async. But with async, 5 can get, uh, can precede that A of percent. Okay, so that is one observation. Uh, let's come to printf1. That is going to be usually uh, getting printed by the CPU. So that printf1 will happen. Then the CPU is going to launch the kernel corresponding to the second one. Um, there is a small issue though there that it is some plus equal to a of i plus i. So although a of i is getting access nicely in parallel, that some variable is getting read as well as written to, and some is not a thread local variable, right? So um, you might uh, wonder that there is a sequentiality in this code. So will this happen on the CPU or the GPU? In this case, thankfully, it happens on the GPU because it is able to uh, perform some parallelization of this code. Right? Like we discussed some time back, uh, this plus equal to can be nicely done using some sort of a reduction, or you can use an atomic instruction to take care of the synchronization across different threads. So that is what the compiler is going to do. So it is going to automatically generate code such that either it uses reduction or it uses atomic instruction to perform this sum correctly. Although they, otherwise there is going to be a data race across different threads because they all are reading from the same sum and writing to the same sum. Okay, So the kernel gets generated corresponding to the first for loop and it will run on the GPU. Uh, then printf2 which is printing the value of sum similar to 2a of 9 and therefore this will wait or this will get pushed to the GPU and this will wait until the first kernel is over. Then there is, uh, I mean, CPU is going to just push this to the queue and go ahead. So CPU goes to the second for, which is which has A of I plus equal to sum. Okay, so, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this A of I now uh, in the first kernel is now getting red. 
and therefore a copy in needs to be generated before this kernel is executed what does that copy in do it copies the kernel values that is all zeros 10 zeros from cpu to gpu memory before this kernel is invoked okay um, as far as the second kernel is concerned it is both reading a of i as well as writing to it and as far as sum is concerned that is global in that sense but it is only read so sum is not causing any problem and this a of i uh, is nicely parallel uh, and the array a also needs to be copied on the gpu but in this case it so happens that the array is already on the gpu because of the first kernel so it doesn't need to generate any copy in uh, and then a of i plus equal to sum will get executed in parallel on the gpu uh, so the host is going to create the kernel and push it to the command queue for a of i plus equal to sum then it will go ahead and check the printf3 that compiler has given to the host and therefore it might end up printing printf3 which can precede printing of the sum that is printing of 2 uh, can come later and printing of 3 might come earlier in a similar manner the third for loop which is printing a of percent d equal to percent d this is also nicely parallel and therefore this happens on the gpu uh, and again printf4 can happen uh, earlier than that and but it is always going to happen after printf3 on the cpu so 1 3 4 there is going to be a sequence 2 might get intermixed but 2 will not come before 1 uh, and 5 will also come after 4 okay so that is something which we can guarantee is it guaranteed that 5 will come after 2 is it guaranteed that 5 will come after 2 We cannot we cannot okay so thanks rama for that uh, okay himanshu also says no yes uh, rajanya also says no yeah so that is correct that five cannot uh, uh, right so yeah so that is correct uh, let's go ahead from here now Okay. But I request everybody to uh, try looking at the what is the output that the compiler gives and try to whatever we argued just by looking at the program, please see if you can uh, see exactly the same behavior with respect to the M info output. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry for the interruption. In, in the previous code, uh, in the very first pragma line, mm -hmm. if you remove that async, what is the advantage that we are getting with the async or that uh, seems to be a little bit not clear yeah so if that async is not there still it looks like same thing yes as far as the behavior of the kernels uh, block is concerned it will be exactly the same uh, it's only about the printing of five that is the change that you will see okay so so which means five can be printed before four or, or uh... no 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 uh, 5 will never be printed before 4, whether but there is async or not. Are doing this async, async, what is the help of this async? Because earlier we discussed in one of the other slides, the kernel uh, is by default async, right? Yes, because there is a, uh, no, no, a kernel is by default async, that is true. Uh, the hash pragma SEC parallel uh, includes by default the barrier at the end. In this case, if there is no async, then mm -hmm. 2 is always going to get printed before 5. If there is no async, 2 mm -hmm. is always going to get printed before 5. But if there is async, then 5 can get printed before 2 okay. or after I see. Uh, So right now, one of the possible outputs can be 1, 3, 5, 4 and then everything, right? No. Uh, 5, 4 is not possible. Sorry, 1, 3, uh, 4, 5, and then everything. Yes, that is possible. Correct. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Two and five. That dependency depends on that async or not. Async. Okay. Yes. Correct. Correct. So if we have some code which uh, we would like to run on the CPU, but we don't want to wait for the GPU, then we can use this async and move that code outside this kernels because we don't want uh, that to be executed in kernel. Okay. So that is the takeaway here. Um, Himanshu says, by the way, has anyone managed to run PGI compilers in Google Colab? Yeah, anybody wants to answer that? I tried a little bit, uh, could not actually. In Google Colab, I tried. Oh, I see. I also failed uh, to some extent. I see. Okay, anyway, I think we are just close to ending of this. So we'll come to the questions soon. Let me just finish this last part and then we'll uh, take up the questions. Um, so there are other constructs which uh, uh, help us uh, modify certain uh, behavior. One is, of course, hash pragma ICC serial, which should come in very handy for you sometimes um, because you don't want to copy the data across the two devices. As we said, that copying of data can be very time consuming, and therefore, exactly the way the CPU is, I mean, the compiler is deciding that uh, printout of A of 9 should happen on the GPU sequentially. Because you don't, you avoid any data copying in a similar manner. You manually can run something on the GPU, and that will avoid any data transfer. Right, so that uh, is going to be handy. Don't think that hash pragma ICC serial will run it on the CPU. It will run it on the GPU. Uh, then num gangs we have seen number of workers, uh, which is the second level in the hierarchy, as we said, fine grain. Uh, 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 amount of parallelism is the workers and then the vector length which we said uh, was by default 32 and it might go on increasing depending upon what you specify as the loop bounds which the compiler might figure out but you can also specify yourself as part of the pragma and private and first private are also similar to what we had in case of openmp where you can privatize a variable um, which means that there is a local copy created for each thread. For example, in this case, uh, we had this uh, sum variable, right? So, I mean, not sum, a, a variable, which is common across all the threads which are running on the GPU. But if I want that uh, local copy of array should be created for some reason, then we can specify private A, and that will create a local copy of A. What should be the first value that comes in for such variables that should be the first private that is typically provided by first private, which means that you should copy the value uh, from outside to the uh, to the first loops. Uh, I mean the first iterations value, right? So uh, in the context of uh, loops, whenever we are copying the values. Uh, we should take the value which is coming from outside for all the arrays or all the variables, all the copies that we have created. So that is called as a first private. In a similar manner, there is a last private also, which means that whatever is the value that is written by the last iteration, that is the last thread, that should get copied finally at the end of the construct. Right. So this concepts come from OpenMP and uh, OpenNCC also find it useful in some cases. All right, so that is kind of what I wanted to convey. Uh, I think we'll worry about vector addition in the next class. So today we looked at uh, uh, not vector addition in the next class, but next to next class. Uh, today we looked at uh, the kernels construct where we try to uh, understand that how compiler is trying to parallelize automatically if there is a sequence of code given. And we saw some behavior in terms of uh, small, very carefully crafted examples to figure out that the compiler can bring in surprises. And therefore, we have to be a little careful when we uh, use kernel's code, uh, kernel's pragma. And if there is a dependence, it might end up doing things on the GPU and might not uh, involve the CPU. And when the CPU only is involved, then the outputs might get asynchronously done, which you were not expecting when you were running it sequentially. Because we typically expect, as Rama was suggesting, that 
there are kind of bulk synchronous or lockstep fashion that they this for loop will execute completely then the printf will execute and then another for loop and so on so that didn't happen and that seems to be the default behavior which we would like to uh, be uh, just a little bit uh, conscious about all right so that uh, kind of completes what i wanted to convey in today's class uh, we can now take up any questions so yeah so I had a mic. yeah go ahead yeah so this vector length when you had compiled say for mm -hmm. 10 you had uh, seen that it was given as 32 right and so like 22 of them were ideal right yes so what is the minimum vector length which is possible typically it is 32 i mean you can also i mean by default it will be 32 you can assign uh, manually one also but, okay uh, yeah so uh, by default you can run it with one vector length also but uh, by default on that is that is essentially serial right that is essentially serial provided you don't have any num gangs given you can specify num gangs as 100 uh -huh. and vector length as one so that will still be parallel the reason why by default it gives 32 is because of the SIMD style execution, the warp length is 32. Uh, so even if we specify one, by default 32, in some sense, that hardware is going to get utilized. So 31 will not get used. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a minor, because uh, most of the times our data sizes are going to be much larger. Yeah, so this um, uh, optimization is done at compile time, right? Uh, this optimization meaning? This uh, how much vector length I'm going to get that is done at compile time, right? Uh, no, uh, only sometimes it gets done at compile time because I can give it as an expression also, which might yeah, yeah, so, depend. Yeah. Yeah. So like we are using all uh, arrays of length ten in this example. So mm -hmm. what if my array was of something user input length? That is correct. So in that case, it will have some default value. For the vector length, typically 128 or so is the default, which it will see if it doesn't figure out what is the value of n, that is the problem size, and then accordingly it will generate the remaining as the number of blocks. So, uh, okay, so think about it this way: that the total number of threads is equal to number of threads inside a thread block, that is inside the one gang, multiplied by the number of gangs. So it will keep the number of uh, threads within a thread block fixed to 128 if it doesn't know anything about n and then it will increase the number of thread blocks to an arbitrary value depending upon the problem size. So if problem size is n, yeah, yeah. n upon 128. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, if I understand, I mean, uh, Dhruva Jyoti's question a little more, uh, uh, the min info, this uh, m info we are using, right? Right. Uh, when we are using this M info, we are get uh, some kind of these uh, some some data is instrumented in the code and uh, that code is getting printed, right? Uh, where how, what is how many number of gangs are there and uh, vector of thirty two and so on. That is based on the compile time, right? Yes, but it will only show the vector length. It will not show the number of gangs in that case. Okay, okay. So if it is coming from the, because the, I mean, as you know, this is coming from the runtime information. So right. it will just yeah. fix the thread block size the way we do 1024 or 512. Right. Exactly right. in the same manner it will do. Okay. And what is the analogy if you see the number of gangs are uh, something like number of uh, CUDA uh, thread blocks? Right. And number of workers is uh, something like number of WAPs. Yes. Right, and then uh, the vector length, I mean, is, I mean, somehow I'm not able to, again, relate. Uh, yeah, so this vector length gets used in multiple uh, places. And uh, although it says that the vector length finally boils down to a single thread, vector right. is actually the warp, which gets executed in SIMD fashion on the GPU. But if you run it on uh, uh, some sort of a CPU, then that uh, vector will get converted into a vector instruction. Right. Uh, I mean, some VLIW instruction or some uh, Intel's uh, uh, vector instruction, uh, AVX right. code, etc. So uh, that is the meaning of that vector. But it usually doesn't make sense on NVIDIA GPUs to have a SIMD execution beyond uh, 32. So right. that way there is a confusion. Uh, 
uh, and I have not seen any proper way in which this can be answered. Right. So, right. although uh, this mapping is shown that gang is a thread block, worker is a warp, and vector lane is a thread, uh, vector turns out to be whatever you execute in SIMD fashion. Okay. So, so, vector, length, so vector length is mapping to the total number of threads uh, within a gang, is it? or? Uh, no, if you have a single gang, then it is fine. But no, vector length need not be. Uh, uh, oh, in this case, uh, in this case, yes. The example that we saw that one twenty eight was the number of threads. Uh, that is also vector length, and uh, there was a single block. Right. So vector length will be the total number of threads in the that are going to be launched. That were going to be launched in that particular example, but in general, it will have to be multiplied by the number of workers. Oh. To get the gang size. Because the workers are specifying the uh, number of warps within. So, right. so since we have not specified, by default, it is one. That is what it says. So, sorry, please. Uh, so, yeah, okay. yeah. So, we have this number of vectors or essentially the vector lengths, which we right. specified as let's say 128 or compiler figure out to be 128. So, there will be 128 threads. But on NVIDIA GPU, we right. cannot have 128 length vector. I mean, they cannot execute in SIMD fashion. Right. So, these are going to get split into multiple warps the way we know it. Right. Uh, so there will be in this case four warps. We have not specified the number of workers, but if we right. specify number of workers also, then this right. needs to be multiplied. Okay, 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 got it. And there will be more threads per thread block in that case. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So I'll also ask a question beyond what Himanshu has asked, since uh, only Rama uh, answered him. Is there anybody who has managed to uh, install and run PGI compiler on your laptop or on some machine? Has somebody tried Hello World program? Essentially, that's what I wanted to uh, uh, get from you guys. Okay, so Swapnil has tried. Thanks for that. Anyone else? Okay, so I suggest that everybody tries it out because until we try, it's going to be difficult to learn uh, this programming. Okay, so if there are uh, any questions, I'll wait for the questions. Otherwise, from my side, uh, it's all done. Uh, I have a small question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, like, uh, let's say if uh, we specify num gangs as 10, then yeah. it will launch 10 threads, right? Or uh, it, it it will be like uh, ten thread blocks with one one thread. It yes. Like right. and, and 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 if I in same way if I specify num workers as ten, then uh, it will be uh, just uh, ten warps with one uh, ten warps, right? Or ten warps in a single uh, thread block. Ah uh, yes yes a single thread block. Any other concerns, questions? Uh, excuse me, sir. I had a question regarding the installation of PGI compilers. Sure, go ahead. Uh, so actually, uh, my Linux machine does not have a NVIDIA graphics card. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I have uh, the Windows Server for Linux in my uh, Windows machine. So, is it uh, possible to uh, do it that way? So you have it as a virtual machine, you are saying? Yeah, the uh, Linux server that is there for Windows. I see. Um, okay, has anybody tried this setup? Uh, yeah, I haven't tried, so I'm not aware. I, I would imagine that there shouldn't be any issue except for the driver. Uh, 
but uh, yeah if anybody has tried then you can possibly help out so are you facing any problems there or you are not yet tried uh, i tried it uh, but um, i wasn't able to install the uh, nvidia uh, hpc pack i was getting a few errors oh i see do you mind posting it on the group maybe one of uh, our colleagues if they have tried maybe uh, or we can also take a look at that uh, and see if there is something which we can suggest okay yeah. yes sir i will try that sure uh, himanshu says that uh, he doesn't have a laptop with gpu he tried collab gcc have an open acc have an open acc work for the hello world no success running pgi compiler so okay at least that is good um yeah the way this says gcc has open acc support yes it does have i think uh, the higher version of gcc has that so uh, uh, yeah if it is working on google collab nothing like it you should be able to run uh, all our codes like that uh, if that hyphen f open acc works out however uh, i'll also mention however uh the behavior some behaviors might be compiler dependent for example we said that the default uh, number of gangs or default number of workers uh this might be a little different uh, across uh, these implementations but as far as conceptual aspects are concerned those you should uh, uh, see exactly the same so it's a good idea if you can try it out with gcc right let's see what all works out no if if those instructions can be shared that will be good actually himanshu has tried right in in uh, google collab uh huh maybe that will be useful for others also uh so i think uh, uh, yeah i had also read this although i haven't tried it it just says that you write your dot c code with the pragmas and just compile it with gcc hyphen open acc file name right. dot c and that should work out okay sure sure we'll try uh Yeah, Durga Jyoti has additional information that hyphen m info equal to Excel is specific to PGCC, and therefore uh, he has given hyphen f opt hyphen info should be used in GCC. Thanks for that, uh, Durga Jyoti. Himanshu has given uh, a link which can be used for this. Great, thanks a lot. all right if there are no further questions then we'll stop here and we'll meet next week that is on monday and we'll discuss about loops and uh, after that we'll discuss about data and then we'll get into uh, some of the applications see you then have a good weekend